Alrighty, so in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make this cool sci-fi orb alien computer thingy. Originally, I was going to release a giant Blender to Nuke video where I go over how I make this effect, but that video is taking too long, so I figured I would just make this one in the meantime. I made this orb for a visual effect shot I did in my latest reel, so I wanted to create a quick tutorial so you can make one yourself. It's super easy to make with endless variations, so let's go ahead and just start up a new one. Starting with a sphere, set it to Shade Smooth, and then create a new material. Give it a darker color and set the roughness real low, and drop down a noise texture. With it selected, do Ctrl plus T on your keyboard to create a mapping and texture coordinate node. If this doesn't work, you need to enable the Node Wrangler add-on. Ctrl Shift click on the noise texture to look through it, and you'll see the noise is now all over your sphere. I left basically all the settings at default, but reduced the size just a bit from 5 to 2, and increased the lacunarity just a bit to 2.2. I then created a Voronoi texture, switched it to Distance to Edge mode, and then enabled the Normalize option. Plug the result of your noise texture into the vector of the Voronoi, and we can see that we're getting kind of closer to this warpy look that we wanted. I'll then increase my scale and detail just a bit, decrease the random, and set the lacunarity to around 5. So we're kind of getting somewhere, but these warps are a little too evenly distributed along my sphere, and I want them to be kind of squashed down a bit to make them look more stretched out along the sides. So what I'll do is leave the Z alone and shrink down the X and Y scale. Our noise will get squashed down and now run more along the sides. For me here, I think a value of 0.3 works nice, but you are free to play around with it more to dial it in. Right now we just have a texture. To actually give this some depth and make it into the shape, add a subdivision surface modifier and increase the subdivisions a few times. Then drop down a displacement node and connect the output of your Voronoi into the height. And then the displacement just needs to go into the material displacement output. If you don't see anything at first, that's fine. Just go over here and set this option in the texture settings to displacement and bump. Now I'll admit this does actually look pretty cool, but obviously the scale for this thing is way too high. If you just want to bring the scale down and don't want super fine control, all you need to do is drop down an invert node after the Voronoi and then add a vector math node set to scale. If you scale it down to 0.5, it should scale perfectly down into the bounds of the actual sphere while still having a bunch of cool depth. But if you want even more control, add in a color ramp. Click on this drop down and flip the color ramp to invert it. And then set your white color down to something like 0.25. If we then bring the black color over to around the middle of the color ramp, we should get something pretty close to the same result as we did with the other method, but now it's just smaller. To fix that, drop down a math node and set it to add, and add a value of 0.25. Now, the two methods should be basically the same, but you get a little bit more control over the shape with the color ramp method, so I prefer that one. Now, if you want a bit more of a flat marble kind of shape, you can then add in a clamp node with a max of 0.5. Now, if we increase the value of our white color on our color ramp, or increase the value on our add node, everything on the inside will get pushed closer to the outside, but it will never get bigger than the actual size of the sphere. Now that we actually have the shape of the object, we want, let's add in some more micro details along the surface to make it look more intricate than it actually is. Just like before, duplicate your Voronoi node and plug the noise texture into its vector. Increase the scale to be a lot higher and then add a color ramp. Plug this into the height of a bump node and then plug that into your material normal input. Out of the box, this thing is going to be pretty intense, so I drop my bump map strength down to around 0.25 and then I just crunch this texture up a bit more by bringing the white value in a bit. Finally, let's make the deepest part of this ball start to glow so it's a little bit more visually distinct. Adding these glowing bits will really help break up the material and also just look really cool. Create a new color ramp and plug it back into the Voronoi we're using for displacement. Then, if we just plug this into our emission strength and dial in the black and white points, we can control which areas of the sphere is glowing. Out of the box though, this won't be glowing bright enough, so let's go ahead and add a math node and set it to multiply and just multiply the strength until it feels sufficiently bright. Now if you've dialed your textures in just right and you're ready to press render but you just want to change up the design a little bit, an easy way to change the look of the marble is just to switch this noise texture over from 3D to 4D. And then if you play with the W value, you basically have infinite variations. If you want every marble you make to have a visually distinct look, all you need to do is add in an object info node. To randomize the glowing center for every marble, all you need to do is add in a hue saturation value node, copy over the color that you used for your original marble, 
and then plug the random output into the hue input. We can then use this to drive the color of our emission instead of a solid color. Now, every time we duplicate the object, it's going to have a different colored core. Now we can also do the exact same thing to randomize the shape. Drop down a multiply node and set it to just a big value, a value like 50 works fine. Then plug that into our noise textures W input. The really cool thing about this is since it's all done in shaders, we can do physics simulations and it's not gonna take forever to calculate. Anyway guys, that's about it for this video. If you liked it and wanna see more like it, go ahead and subscribe. I've been Alex from Level Up Plus VFX and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.